wizard there with i wish it could be christmas every day uh which would be a nightmare if you think about it in practical terms it would just not be workable don't you think joe cornish i agree i i, I think that's an awful song uh an awful song yeah i think that's an awful song well i don't agree i think that's one of the most heartwarming wonderful songs ever written i think it thrusts its hand into the chest of christmas and rips its heart out oh my lord like that evil man in Ooh. indiana jones in the temple of doom what kind of opening gambit is that for just past nine on the 22nd of this December, is like it 2007 it, you know we're keeping it real they know they're with people who won't kowtow to to the playlist well one of them won't yeah the other one likes it <laughs> um now we're in a special shack listeners because it's our christmas show yeah every christmas adam and i like <sighs> to leave the studio you all right yeah how many little cough yeah well it's cold isn't it it's, it's freezing, freezing. It's chilly. it might be a white christmas this christmas oh yeah the, the, the bookies are saying it could be are they really yeah they are the bookies oh i love the bookies. bookies and uh so we've left the six music studio and we've gone to a little shack in the middle of a field in the english countryside in the trocadero in the trocadero and uh we're very cold so are we gonna light light that fire yeah i've got some matches come on baby here we go um, there we go oh dear come on mate sorry oh, safety. There, we go. there we are oh i've oh. burnt my shot i burnt my sleeve my oh, sleeve smells on nice fire. it smells nice here uh, oh, hand well, burning! It's, nice. uh, it's out now. It's nice. I like the smell of burnt wool. Oh, uh, good morning, goodness listeners. Goodness Welcome to the Adam and Joe uh, radio show here on BBC Six Music. Uh, it's Saturday, the twenty-second of December. Uh, it's very nearly Christmas. Christmas in three days' time. Mm, I'm just going to put some Christmas music on. So you know, by rights, everybody should be feeling really all cosy uh, and cuddly and warm and lovely. There's no work on Monday. Uh, that's right, isn't it? Because yeah. Monday's like, well, some people might have to go to work. We're on holidays. But- holidays holidays that's danish holiday exactly yeah some people might have to go to work on monday but they'll just be phoning it in you know they'll be in the office they won't actually be doing any real work yeah it'll be uh, the surgeons to be mad the surgeons will be phoning it in exactly <laughs> yeah the ambulance drivers they'll just be going at like 45 <laughs> miles an hour just do uh, like just a normal just yeah. just like a really yeah. one long stitch that should be fine that'll keep it together <laughs> <laughs> uh we've got great music coming up uh for you for the next three hours obviously we should remind you though uh it's a matter of transport uh, uh, transparency here at the bbc to declare that this is a pre-recorded show uh so don't bother texting uh you'll be wasting your finger power yeah um yeah that's it really exactly because if you did and it was found out oh my gosh if what if they texted and they texted and in and someone found out that they were texting exactly what would happen we'd both be shot why because of the um that's because they feel actually. so let down that's true because they they would have paid what yep. how much for the text hey, they would have paid 2008 is going to be a fresh slate for telly yeah it's all about a telly radio the bbc it's mm. all about regaining trust so you know let's just be perfectly honest about everything purply honest purply well, let's be <laughs> perfectly honest <laughs> um we've got great music coming up for you in the next uh 25 hours including <laughs> some james brown uh some interpol uh you know all that kind of business as so well as our gay. as well as our favorite christmas tunes now uh, joe and i like to wheel out more or less the same christmas tunes every year. everyone yeah. does you know there's only a small pool of christmas tunes that, that are any good of. exactly That's so so we like to wheel them out you'll be hearing all your favorites and maybe a couple that you haven't heard before uh in the next two and a half hours yeah two and, and a bit more this is going to be a kind of freewheeling show we're not doing our usual uh competitions and stuff like that no. instead adam and i have bought presents for each other and I've bought, I've bought some lager. Adam's got a can of beer. That's a bit sleazy, isn't it? Because it's nine in the morning. Yeah, that's very What do you think sleazy. about that? But it's holidays. It's fine, man. I'm going to smoke some crack a bit later. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Is that all right? Not really. I'm not really going to do that, listeners. Yeah, what that's, are you? That's a joke. What are you, Russell Brand? That's a joke, too. Okay? So don't yeah. bother writing in, because we're not here. So listen, before we get ourselves in any more trouble... Um, Let's have some more music. This is a, a very Christmassy band, you know, because they got the word Arctic in the title. This is the Arctic Monkeys with Teddy Picker. Oh, that's the Arctic Monkeys with Teddy Picker. I kept on saying throughout the year that, oh, Richard Iowede directed a video for that. Incorrect. He directed the video for one of the previous singles from that album. Uh, it's a video with clowns beating up mm. hard men in a, mm. in a, a good kind fit. of warehouse. It is good. It's a good fit. Hey, listen, news has just come in. Oh. Uh, Christmas has been cancelled. Oh, no. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm afraid Gordon Brown and Jonathan Porritt. Right. Do you know who he is? Uh, no. He's a kind of eco man. They've cancelled it because it's ecologically unsound. What's wrong with Christmas? Uh, because Christmas involves chopping down trees. Yeah. Buying useless things. Right. Uh, plugging in fancy lights that drain electricity. That's true. Watching extra television. Yeah. Cooking extra food. Over the Christmas period, the earth uses more 
carbon fibers <laughs> yeah that's what the environment's made up of right than any other type of time of year that's probably t are you making all that up that sounds yeah, has the yeah, ring of truth yeah, though yeah i was thinking about it the other day mm. i thought you know if we were really taking the end of the world seriously uh then we just cancel Get the whole thing Christmas. or we you know you'd make it super kind of earthy uh you'd give Oh, you know those Oxfam type presents? Mm. Well, have you ever been given a present by what, one of those Oxfam presents where they give you a card and say, oh, I've bought a donkey for the third world? No, I never have. Really? I, that shows the circles you mix in and the values of have your you? family. Yeah. No. A lot. By your brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by my brother and uh, my girlfriend often gets them. So how many donkeys have, uh, have you got then? Uh, I've bought a couple of donkeys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, good for the guy with the donkey, but bad news for me. So is the point... Um, Where's the goods? Is the point? Where's the stuff? Exactly. <laughs> Where's the stuff? You know, is the point? You know what? And I'm that... sure the guy with the donkey might agree as well at right. the end of the day. Is it to help the donkey, or is it just to give a gift that doesn't involve using up more of the world's yeah, resources? Yeah, it's, it's to actually do something good. So it, because rather I than could... just indulge yourself for your, you know, your family. Because a donkey, that's bad, man. <laughs> Why is a donkey bad? Well, I, I could the understand a carrying... star. If someone gave you a star, I'd name the star after you. Uh, what? Well, how would that help someone in the third? Joe world? Star. <laughs> and then you could say, I've got a star. Is that what you're doing uh, for Christmas? Well, who are you're, you you're helping in the third world adopting a donkey? guy that gets the donkey. What? Because he can carry water on it. Donkeys are essential. Dear me. I don't understand. <laughs> That's what I'm going to give you for Christmas. But, you know, listeners, uh, we bought each other uh, presents. Adam and I have bought each other presents. We're going to be open opening them as the show goes on. Uh, none of them are environmentally friendly presents or kind of Oxfam-type presents, are they? Well, mine is. <laughs> One of mine came from uh, really? Dr. Bernardo's, actually. Really? But, you know, don't worry, Christmas hasn't been cancelled. Uh, and it's the time when uh, God gives us permission. Jesus gives us permission to indulge in a horrific way that's what it says in the bible <laughs> isn't it isn't that what it says in the bible it is yeah there's ecclesiastes, a long ecclesiastes somewhere in the ecclesiastes and lo jesus said this week no don't worry about it don't worry about it <laughs> have another drinky speaking of which mm. i've got some uh, i brought in a special bottle from my fridge it's been in the fr it's been in the fridge for one and a half years <laughs> is that really so yes it's, wow you really pushed the boat out it's a bottle of <laughs> prosecco <laughs> and it looks a little bit like champagne if you squint it looks like champagne and it's got a champagne style cork and everything i just knocked it against the mic there. i love things that are just style yeah would you, know, you i don't like the real thing i like something that's just styled after the real thing right like yeah. uh, like some uh, kind of brand of uh, cereal that you get in like a big yeah. supermarket it looks a little bit like a famous brand of cereal but yeah. actually it's just the own brand it's that's a bit cool. like a flavored something you know you can buy chocolate that's not chocolate it's chocolate flavor mm. and that's not real chocolate chocolate flavored yeah. chocolate <laughs> <laughs> you can get chocolate flavored <laughs> chocolate cakes right yeah so would you're you gonna open that would you like a glass of prosecco definitely i think on the 22nd of december you're allowed to drink yeah. again it says that in uh ecclesiastes <laughs> And, and lo, Jesus said, you're allowed to drink before 10 a.m. Right. In fact, not only that, but you must. As long as it's Prosecco. Here we go. Listen for the cork, listeners. I'm listening. Oh, oh, oh man. It took out the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I re very nearly smashed wow, I think the big British castle clock. I think killed Steve Lamac. Let's have some I more music. It went through <laughs> the ceiling and went all the way up Steve Lamac's bottom. That's not very good, is it? We might um, be in favour he liked it. Uh, so listen, while, while we're having a glass of Prosecco, here's some more music. And I think we've got, uh, or is it music or a trail now? Music. Uh, they're kind of the same things to me. Wouldn't it be amazing if the trail had music in it? Then it would It'll be never happen. two brilliant things for the price of Dream one. on. But I think it's music. It's The Beat with Too Nice to Talk To. Mmm. That was The Beat with Too Nice to Talk To. Not only did I enjoy The Beat, but I'm also enjoying my glass of Prosecco. And you can't really hear the bubbles over hey, the hey. crackle of the fire there. You know what? That uh, that record by The Beat, it's called Too Nice to Talk To. Yeah. Too double O Nice to Talk To. If that was released today, it would have the numbers in it, wouldn't it? Right. It would be n the number two nice to talk to, right? Yeah, exactly. There's so many twos in there. Yeah. You'd be missing a trick not to. Maybe you could have the word two and the number two and the Roman numeral two. Hey, listeners, if, if you've been listening, you'll know that we're... You just we've started drinking. I'm just keeping things ticking along. Just That's a really good idea. Thanks. But I was going to say cheers. Cheers, man. Because you know, we've got little glasses of champagne. Happy Christmas. Uh, it's, it's Saturday, uh, it's December the 22nd, so we're allowed to drink in the morning, mm. as we've already established. In fact, other things you could do with your drink this morning is put it on your cereal, uh, bathe in it, um, or what else could you do with Have this? you ever poured booze over yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no, I don't think I have. 
Never? Of you? Well, I'm just thinking... And if so, under what circumstances? It seems like the kind of thing you would do if you were a sexy grown-up man and you had maybe a woman who wanted to drink it. It's the would... kind of thing... I think the only people who've ever done that are Scrooge McDuck and P. Diddy. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck? Why yeah. would he do it? Because he bathes in... He's got a massive uh, room full of money that he swims in. Right. Yeah. That's the kind of over-the-top thing he would do. But I wouldn't drink it if it was coming, uh, you know, like champagne off uh, Scrooge McDuck's back. No. no, I wouldn't have that. That would be disgusting. And I always feel the same thing Sounds as well. Sounds like, like an aphorism. Right. Which is like champagne off Scrooge McDuck's back. Yeah. Um, that was intentional. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, man. And, uh, yeah, it would be, it's unhygienic, though. Why would you want to... Have you ever dr uh, drunk or eaten anything off another human being? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> That's a yes. Okay, listen, folks, we are going to be unwrapping the first of our Christmas presents for each other after this next track, and this is something I've chosen for you. This was voted by Word Magazine as the very best Christmas song in one of their kind of uh, roundups of the best and worst Christmas songs in their issue a couple of weeks ago. And I must say I agree. It's the waitresses with Christmas wrapping. Enjoy! Hey, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, this is our sort of Christmas show. That's why you can hear the sound of a lovely, warm, toasty, Christmassy fire. We're in a lovely Christmassy shack. And we've got a load of presents for each other. I said that we were going to be unwrapping our first present after that last track, the waitresses. But actually, we're going to wait for the news because it's, it's going to be news time soon. But before that, here's one of the big musical success stories of 2007. Yeah, this is a song inspired by when they went to see the film Control and someone stood up and went to the loo uh yeah it's gossip with standing in the way of control nice that was the gossip with standing in the way of control this is adam and joe here on bbc six music it's our christmas show and we'll be back very shortly but first here is the green day with warning hey this is adam buxton uh this is joe cornish the sound you can hear in the background listeners is a lovely christmassy fire uh this is our special christmas show uh this is the show we're doing closest to the actual day of christmas the the sweet spot the nexus the pivotal moment <laughs> of the season yeah and uh we, we we should confess to you right now that this is a pre-recorded show so please don't text or email us because it would be a waste and then uh the whole world would crumble you'd feel used a waste we'd feel embarrassed it would be a nightmare but of course uh because it's christmas adam and i have bought each other presents and sitting here beneath the uh, a christmas tree we we do actually have a christmas tree right we wouldn't lie about that no no we're not allowed to lie here at no there's no lie you got a full uh, big christmas tree uh, an invisible one. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we've got a full-blown <laughs> Christmas tree. <laughs> I will. We've got a full-blown Christmas tree, and underneath it is a lovely pile of exciting, brightly <laughs> coloured wrapped presents. My mind is so pathetic <laughs> that all I can think of is the filthiness of that. Just the idea of a, a full-blown Christmas tree with a big pile of prezzies just sounds filthy to my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. Anyway, um, listen, who shall give first? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, Christmas is all about giving. It's true, isn't it? Um, well, why don't, why don't you have, well, uh, I'm gonna one, give two, you... three, four, one, two, three. I've, let's start with you giving me a present, because, right. uh, you've bought me more presents than I've bought you. Really? But it depends on the quality of the individual present, doesn't it? Well, how do you rate the quality of your presents? Uh, what, the ones that I've bought for you? Yeah. What, what method do I use, or well, no, how would I actually rate them? Yeah, how would you rate them? Very high. Very high? Yeah. Do you think I would genuinely like any of the presents you've got me? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, listen. I tell you, do you know how long it took me to get these presents? No. 25 minutes. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's do you know how much their total worth is? Mm, I would say eight pounds. No, that, that that's about 15... 16 pounds worth really of presents. yeah i'm just gonna tot up mine quickly <laughs> in my head uh yours are worth about actually well yours are worth about 20 quid really yeah really yeah wow that's exciting here you go here's the first present so here we go it's very exciting listeners do you know what that is can you uh, tell well it, it feels like a cd over the years i've yeah. become quite adept at identifying wrapped objects yeah of course uh and this is c quite clearly a cd mm -hmm. uh, opening it up oh Oh, this actually looks <laughs> quite good. Well, you know. <laughs> it's a CD. It's called Stealing Christmas, and it's got a large uh, man playing a steel drum. He's sort of leaning on the steel drum and kind of poking something inside it, and the steel drum's got holly attached to it. He's called Brent Holder. Uh, uh, maybe Ben, our producer for today, could uh, stick it on for us. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to uh, pass the CD there to Ben. The only thing that is a little bit suspicious making is the cover's cracked there. You uh, know, does that mean it's second hand it, or it, it's a reject from your collection or has it merely been handled roughly? Dr. Bernardo's 
Really? And yeah. Not, is it second hand? It is. Um, <laughs> do, do you own, do you know what two. this record is? Let's go is? for track two. Uh, because the first one, what's track two called? Uh, track two is called Ding Dong Merrily on High. I've, I've heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not recognisable yet, but it will be in a, sh in a second. It's a nice little intro here. Ready? Ooh! Ding Dong Merrily on High. I live in Jamaica. I'm playing the steel drums. This is great. It's good, isn't it? There we go. There's a biography here. It says the Port of Spain Police Youth Club in Trinidad was the first place Brent started playing the steel pan instrument from the tender age of eight. Wow, so he's a kind of steel pan expert. Um, that's exciting. It's good, isn't it? Because it sounds almost synthesized. You know, it's like he's so precise, but this is real steel drum playing you're hearing, mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. What's his name again, the guy? His name is Brent Holder. That sounds like a Star Trek actor. Yeah. Well, Brent Spiner played Data. So what, um, uh, drew you to this? <laughs> 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 well, to be honest, I just thought it might it might be fun just to play uh, on the show a little bit, and I thought you'd dig it because you know you, you've got um, questing kind of musical tastes, don't you? And yeah, and you enjoy the uh, enjoy the the, the the rhythm and the blues and that exactly, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. so I thought a bit of steel drum would be nice. And you know what I was thinking as well is the other day when we did Song Wars Christmas songs, mm. I was originally going to go down the steel drum route. Ah, I went down a different route in the end, but I. Uh, I was, you know, very attracted to that. Are you drinking your Prosecco, incidentally? Me? Yeah. I've had a couple of sips, yeah. I've had more than a couple of sips. <laughs> I'm pacing myself. Not even ten o'clock. I'm a little bit wow. tooty. Yeah. Uh, we should probably well, play some music. That's very kind, man. Thank you very much. Are you seriously, are you genuinely a little bit happy with that? Uh, mm, not really. Little, yeah, a little bit. Will you play it? A, a little bit. That crack's really taking the edge off it, I though. Thought, I, I genuinely thought about rehousing it. It's in funny, isn't it? CD. When you have a CD and the case cracks, it for me, it just takes the edge off the I whole... I know what you mean. ...the band, their I'm career, really... and the music within. I'm sorry about that. It just feels cheap. Yeah. How much was it? Is that an un-Christmassy question to A little ask? bit. A little bit on christmas Three pounds. <laughs> Three pounds? <laughs> yes. Should we have some music? Yeah. Let's have, uh, this is, um, Ding Dong Merrily on High <laughs> by Brent Hall. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that. This is Ida Maria with Drive Away My Heart. Wow, she just refused to die there. She's like an animal <sighs> caught in a trap and she had a couple death throws there. And what's Christmas going to be like at Ida Maria's house? Quite very, serious. Very serious. Uh, quite confused. Yeah. Lots of strange pauses and then sudden noises. Dad, I got you a dictionary. <laughs> I think her family died, but they're still sitting around the table. Right. Texas Chainsaw Massacre style. Hide her. She tries to force a hammer into her father's hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty business, what isn't it? An appalling image. Appalling. Uh, it's from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know, story. but I'm Kids saying. love that film. Kids watch that film these days. That is one of the most horrific moments it in is. It's horrible, cinema, horrible isn't it? business. Let's not take that any further, because oh it's Christmas, gosh. and we should banish that thought of uh, that kind of necrophiliac in a party <laughs> chit-chat. <laughs> <laughs> we should banish it from our minds. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Uh, Merry, very nearly Christmas, listeners. Um, Adam and I, to celebrate the season, have done something uh, that, ev well, that everybody does and bought each other presents. Adam has just given me a, a marvellous uh, CD <laughs> of, um, <laughs> of uh, steel drum uh music i would wish you, i wish you not even could see the cover art on this thing <laughs> <laughs> would you not even play that like at a little party just for a little bit very a very small hour. party you know a very a, a very very small party yeah. one, one with nobody there here's a present for you thanks man it's all right uh this is a small present listeners and it should be noted that joe cornish has wrapped his presents this year in the newspaper <laughs> man that was a in the this newspaper. is radio. There was no need for you to actually be transparent. I thought the listeners that, should know because I took the time to wrap your stuff in nice silver paper from a shop. It's true, and the paper actually was probably worth more than the <laughs> uh, than the present <laughs> and the gifts. But no, I only mention that um, because in previous years I've been a bit slack about my wrapping. I remember one year I didn't wrap anything at all. I just handed you stuff. That's very another slack. year you didn't buy anything. Uh, that's probably true. Yeah. yeah. Now you're always but, but look at what newspaper I've wrapped it in. Uh, what, uh, the Daily Telegraph. Yeah. Do you read the Daily Telegraph? The sport pages. You're good at reading newspapers, though. How many newspapers do you buy a day? Just the one. No, I didn't. That was, that was got from, uh, the Six Music Used newspaper pile. The Telegraph's a good paper, though, isn't it? I, I'm not a big, uh, newspaper reader, I have to admit. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, look, manager of the month. <laughs> hey, <laughs> focus on the present, not the paper. I mean, it is lovely paper. Congratulations <laughs> to Paul Cook from Nuneaton. 
Frankly, he had a crack in November as his team, the Crook Faces rude. Trois. Man, uh, you're being very rude. Sorry, mate, sorry. Describe what's happening. Talk us through it. Oh, McLeish arrival to end takeover. <laughs> oh, sorry. Now, listen, I've unwrapped it, and in the middle, it's a kind of, oh my gosh, what is this? It's a sort of tube, a little tube, this, uh, a, a little smaller than a tube of Smarties. Uh, actually, maybe half the size of a tube of Smarties. Listen, if you go about it this way, you'll never figure out what it is. Uh, what well, do you I... think it is? A, t a telescope? A firework? Could it be? It looks like a firework. It looks like the cardboard right, middle of a firework. You, otherwise, we'll be here all evening. All right, then. I got this from uh, that music shop in the Tottenham Court Road. Is it called Macrami? It it looks like uh, a, the kind of musical instrument that Damon Albarn would yeah, use. Yeah, tell you what this is. It is a musical instrument. It's what they call um, a jaw harp. Oh, yeah. Have you ever used one of those before? No. During the next record, you can figure out how to use it. But you 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 put it between your lips. You open you, your mouth, and then you go. Oh! I just uh, snapped he just myself. Snapped it against his oh. mouth. Have you actually cut your? I lips don't know. There? It could have gone right. It could have just pierced my cheek with the with pace, the heart. Pace yourself with it. Pace oh yourself my lord! Am I bleeding? Uh, not yet. No, but I am. Oh, Look yeah. at that. That's blood, mate. A little bit of blood. Oh my lord! Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the deadly present. Well, I didn't. Because this is not a normal one. Usually, I've seen these things before. They're also known in the old world as a Jew's harp. Um, oh, you, you know that they, they sit round, uh, they sit round campfires and they go. Bang, 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 bang. You're going to be doing that in a second. We're going to go for a record during the record. I'm really learn. bleeding. Look it's at not this. Not my fault. It's pouring out. It's not my fault. I just had two glasses of prosecco. I'm not coordinated. You give me this deadly device. Yeah, but it, it's like me giving you a <laughs> box of chocolates and then you stuffing them into your eyes and then complaining <laughs> that your eyes hurt. <laughs> Come on, then. You picked this next track, right? I did, yeah. This is the Rolling Stones. Uh, it's called Winter. Are you a Stones fan? Mm, yeah. Where'd you hear this song? I bet this is on a uh, soundtrack, right? No. <laughs> it's a great classic Rolling Stones song. <laughs> One of my favourites. <laughs> it's called Winter. This is Adam and Joe, BBC Six Music. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is our special Christmas show. We're in a little wooden shack. We've got a fire going. Uh, and you just heard the Rolling Stones with Winter. Uh, and I just gave Adam his first Christmas present. It's a jaw harp, uh, and during the break, uh, well, during that last record, he's been learning how to play it, and yeah. before that record, he just cut a chunk of his <laughs> lip off with it. It's a very sharp, uh, jaw harp, I must say, and I, is, yeah. I almost immediately, because I'm a slightly mal-coordinated, shoved it right in my Man, cheek. I was flattered by that, because you did that because you were so excited about it. I was excited it. about you it. nearly ate it. You know, it slightly puts my present to you to shame because it's a far more creative and it's something that i could use in the future as well to yeah. maybe for song wars yeah. that kind of thing it's great and it looks pretty as well but i think you're going to like your next present really very much before we move on to that i'd like to hear some of your uh uh jaw harp stylings oh, I admit uh, you hold, hold it by the tip because you've got to let it resonate it's all about resonation what do you want me to play i'd like you to play uh, uh orange juice's track i can't help myself Four times, I can't help myself, I can't help myself, oh, <laughs> I can't, that's good, that's quite good, that's the sound of Adam beginning, uh, to, to learn to play the jaw harp, and in a few months time, he might be one of Britain's leading jaw harpists, try and change the note, what do you mean change I'm changing <laughs> all over the area, hang on, that's good, uh, that's a great idea for a Christmas present, uh, even though I say it myself. It costs like six quid, uh, you know? I mean, you know, you don't get many more notes than that out of it, do you? Oh, the, no, you do. It's suddenly... It, <laughs> what do you mean? Here, look, take it. I'm not taking it. It's got all your germs all over it. Well, it's got all my blood all over it. I'll, I'll have a little go of it during the next record. Here's a session track recorded for the David Kidd Jensen Show on Radio 1 on the 25th of August. Uh, August? April, 1982. Uh, what a year 82 was. Um, and this oh, is orange juice. Classic year. A classic year. And after this, who's giving who a present? Uh, I'm I don't know. You we, might, we might wait till the next hour. Oh my gosh. Are we in the next hour? Ooh, very nearly. Yeah. Uh, here's orange juice with I Can't Help Myself. That was Beck with Little Drum Machine Boy, and that was a little remix that I did myself for did you? you listeners. Yeah, because uh, the actual track, which I think is on the B side of. Oh, I forget. It was on, you know what, it was on a freebie giveaway thing that came with Select Magazine years ago. Uh, and it was a really good little sort of is EP. It, is it rude? 
Uh, there was a little bit of rudeness in there. I hope it didn't offend anybody, but also, um, it went on for hours. The original thing was like oh, eight so and you half kind of minutes. compressed it. Did a little compression on it. Good work. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, anyway, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's our Christmas show. Even though it's only the 22nd, you've still got a load of time to do all your present buying. There's yeah. no hurry. And hey, Merry Crinkles, Chris, uh, Christmas listeners. Yeah, exactly. Because Christmas is our favourite time of year. Mm. You know, even if you don't necessarily believe in every single aspect of it, it's still a nice time just to take stock, relax a little bit, if you're lucky enough to get some time off from your hard work, just see some friends, you know. Uh, are you big on the Christmas card situation, Joe? No, I, I'm ashamed to say I've never sent a Christmas card in my life. That's lucky, man. I envy you, because there's no real reason for it. And it's just a sort of insane routine that people get into that well, gets it's a, worse as you get older. It's a policy decision, isn't it? Yeah, Weirdly, yeah. Uh, our friend Louis Theroux, you might occasionally see him on the telly mm -hmm. this year christmas cards right never before well he's a family man now, a christmas though. card that's true isn't it i think if you have the kiddles mm. uh and all that sort of business christmas cards become part of the whole deal i'm one of these people that puts their children on their christmas cards what do you mean by that I actually place both the boys on top of the card, and I shove them into the letterbox, and then they accompany the Just card. To get rid of them. No, that's not true. I take pictures of them in cute poses. Oh, God. <laughs> You're like that American woman that, that does the awful pictures of babies. What's she called? Anne Geds Gedders. Yeah, I'm exactly like her. No, it's mainly you for... You look very like her. Thank you. It's mainly for my parents, you know, because they get... And it's for me and my wife as well. We enjoy dressing them up and making them look ludicrous. But I can't stop myself doing it, even though a lot of my friends I know disapprove and think it's very tacky and uh, ludicrous and sort of show off to parade mm. my children in, yep. in Christmas garb. Mm, correct. But I like doing it, and it's What are sweet. they dressed in this year? Um, this year, well, we've left it quite late this year. We haven't done it yet. We haven't done it yet? No, it's the 22nd, and we still haven't done our Christmas card, so it might be a sort of New Year motif we might... What are you thinking? In there. What are you thinking, costume-wise? I'm thinking, well, generally we go fairly traditional with the costumes. Just a Christmas hat. Like a little Christmas hat. They're old enough to resist now, aren't they? Man, they've been old enough to resist for the last three <laughs> years. They hate it. Do they? They absolutely hate really? it. Really? I think you should do them up like celebrities, like they do in Heat magazine. Honestly, that's what I've been waiting for. Every really? year, Every year, I think if there was a prominent celebrity couple, yeah. I'd just who would photoshop be the their faces Who, who are the there? key couple this year? Brown and Blair. I could have Brown and Blair. Brown you could have done a sort of satirical, <laughs> political pose exactly uh yeah have you mm. seen that advert i think it's for schweppes or something like that where it's a it's a, it's a kind of photoshop job of a bar and everybody's in there giving is each it other an gifts. alison jackson is she called alison jackson oh yeah the artist who does all the celebrity lookalikes right it's lookalikes is it yeah i think so there you go it's ludicrous and it's got pete doherty and sure uh, yeah they're the big people and who is it it's posh and bex is the other one is it there we go mm. the most famous people 2007 i guess that's that's the consensus blair yeah. and brown posh and bex and doherty and what a retarded world we live in yeah and i'm the king of it what do you mean well i'm the most retarded person in it oh really yes yeah, so i'm the king well. <laughs> now listen i want to tell you about frank's nativity play frank is my son incidentally listeners hope you won't mind me talking about him I'll be talking about uh, his nativity play very shortly, and of course we've got some present-giving business to mm. uh, settle as well shortly. But first, here's some more music. This is Interpol, the most Christmassy band in the world, <laughs> with the Heinrich Maneuver. That was uh, Interpol with the Heinrich Maneuver. This is Adam and John, BBC Six Music, uh, coming to you from our Christmas shack uh, here in central London, where we've got a lovely, cosy, roaring log fire. Uh, and, uh, we got, Adam's now gonna what? We got Booker T and the MGs playing in the corner there. Yeah. Right, lads? Just a few Christmas songs. Yeah, thank you, fine, thank you, having a nice time. How are you, Joe? Shh, fine, thanks. Nice Keep it down. Uh, Booker T Washington was speaking there. Um, now, Adam, you were gonna tell us about your, uh, son's nativity play. I'm gonna sit back and drink my, what is this? Prosecco. Prosecco, yeah. Mm, it's mm. about alcohol early in the morning, but it's alright because it's Christmas. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Are you okay. feeling a little bit tooty now? A tiny bit tooty, yeah. Taking the edge off a little I've got a very low, uh, tolerance for alcohol, so I'm, I'm entering the headache phase. <laughs> Are you immediately? <laughs> Almost immediately. My enjoyment lasted about four seconds. <laughs> that tends to be the problem with sparkling wine. Yeah. Go for it, though. Tell us about the nativity play. Well, I went to my son Frank's nativity play. He's about five and a half now, and, uh, this was the first time that he's been involved with a school play production thing and not immediately started crying as soon as he appeared on the stage and ran away because he finds it too much it's overwhelming you know he's not a natural performer in that respect 
but this time man he nailed it he had a line his line was um we come bearing gifts of gold precious frankincense and myrrh and uh, he also sang many of the songs he didn't solo it but he was a very valuable part of the choir so i was extremely proud but my um enjoyment of the whole thing was somewhat what's the word marred marred mollified offset by not mollified certainly but offset by the fact that uh christmas nativity play now is a total scrum is there any other kind of nativity play apart from a christmas one no but it's a it's a total scrum in the video age the phone age right and the camera age mm. parents are just going absolutely nuts it's, well this it's is like the, the subject of uh well, was it in a, a movie or a tv sketch show i can remember seeing a sequence in something where uh it's like a press call yeah yeah it's like the world's press are taking photos of uh, David Beckham in his weird bulgy knickknocks. Yes. Uh, people are just crazy. Exactly. And, and kind of, uh, it's as if human beings don't have memories anymore. Right. Do you know what I mean? I always think if something really means something, if you just look at it really hard with your eyes, mm -hmm. uh, there are nerve endings in the brain that, that record <laughs> it, you know? Yeah. And that might be a bit more, um, meaningful in a way, filming stuff or taking photos is actually reductive. <laughs> Well, to a degree. I'm just giving you... I'm being devil's advocate. Yes, yes, uh, yes. But certainly, w when you see things like that, and uh, I think I've been to a friend's nativity play where I witnessed a very similar scene, and, yeah, one does think, man, this has gone too far. Was the scene t something to do with Mary and Joseph? Uh, it was a similar scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that kind of scene. I mean, it's unusual, of course, these days to see something that traditional, because only 5% of schools are doing traditional nativity plays, because right. the, uh, cause the, the killjoys want to stamp it out. Yeah. Um, so we're told. But anyway... Well, there's many different uh, religions in the country. Yeah, but the other religions are not going around saying, you know what makes me sick is nativity plays. I think it's mainly... Sort yeah, of you've got to be inclusive with little kids yeah it's a tricky subject it's a kind of political hot potato that we don't Ooh, like to handle I here on the hot potatoes. Potatoes. show let's open that political hot potato oh, put delicious a, put a knob of butter in and a little bit of cheese mm. just a knob maybe um that's a delicious hot potato <laughs> thanks very much <laughs> but no i was thinking all the same stuff that you were saying previously about uh memorizing things and the value of memory as opposed to just the stark uh image from a phone cam or whatever mm, mm, mm. but it, it didn't stop me rushing down there and trying to get a little shot i, I knelt at the front because the, th the problem in the church was that you know you've got all the people in the pews it's a packed house in the pews but the children actually involved with the production were not raised up there was no stage or anything mm. and they were very close to the front row so only the front row got a good view everyone else was stuffed it so sounds badly directed it was i'll a, do next year yeah could you yeah and i was thinking if they'd asked me i would have got them some cheap staging some cheap risers mm, you know mm. i could have sorted the whole thing out there wouldn't have been a big scrum but no they wouldn't ask me about it and instead it was a disaster was it it was the biggest <laughs> no it wasn't it was charming but uh, i bet it was charming i wish i could have seen a little some more. schools have banned recording devices haven't they have they from their plays Probably yeah quite wisely i mean yeah. it was out of control here there was, was people it? with massive telephoto lenses and stuff really yeah it was way out of control the thing is when you're filming something like that that you don't actually kind of uh you know where it's not a proper film mm. uh it's probably hard to know where to point the camera right do you go for a wide do you do you zoom in for a close-up well, how did you handle you were just on frank the whole time zooming in yeah i don't want the whole uh you're angel, not interested in any, any of the other kids you just want frank i got an establisher but mainly i wanted frank he was looking sweet there with his halo but yeah. th then the problem is once you zoom in on a d on a digital camera it's total blocko vision oh you were taking stills you weren't taking video i was taking video but on on the mini camera ah so i'm probably never going to see it again and my memory of the <laughs> whole thing is just a kind of mad photo scrum with Frank yeah. somewhere in the middle of it. What's the world come to? I don't know. Would I don't know either. Would you like some music mm. to help you think about it? Sure, okay. What have you got? I've got only one of the best songs ever recorded by a human being. I is this what I think it is? It's Duffy. Oh. With rock fairy. It's not what I thought it was. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? We we sort of gave it a rather uh, inappropriate. You were sniggering. I was it. sniggering and snorting, but uh, not at the music. It was just happened to be a good moment for a snigger and a snort. But that was Duffy with Rock Fairy. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's our Christmas show. We're in our little shack. We've got our fire going. We're playing some good Christmassy songs. We've got some presents to give. I think it's time for our next present very shortly, don't you think? Yeah. What about right now? 
Right now, you say. I'm greedy for prezzies. Mm, okay, I love then. The prezzies. You can have a what would present. you say, Adam Buxton? Oh. Uh, was the best present you've ever been given in your whole life for Christmas? The most excited you've ever been? Well, the most excited, that's easy. The most excited was when I got my. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I got my Sony Trinitron uh, color television. How old were you? I was uh, 12. Wow. Um, and th so that would have been 1981, 1982. Is that the first uh, telly you actually owned in, yeah, in your bedroom? first TV. And my parents were very reluctant to, mm. to give it to me, you know, obviously, because you don't it want to... It has had a, a, a seriously detrimental <laughs> effect. <laughs> well, exactly. No, I mean, it essentially made it possible for me to earn money in my later life in this ludicrous manner because mm. Uh, mm. it meant that i could watch a huge amount of all kinds of television at any time and it was great and it's a, it's still working today it's still in my house it's really a, yeah it's a classic little tv wow well how about you uh probably the play people fire engine really they're called playmobil now yeah. but i was obsessed with play people uh and yeah i got a play people fire engine and because my birthday is very near christmas right uh, it was a joint birthday present. Yeah, my parents couldn't afford it. Oh, really? Uh, they couldn't afford the whole play person fire How engine. How old were you? They thought it was too sort of greedy and demanding. What was this, 26, 27, 27 years old? 27, yeah. 27. No, I don't know. It, pro pro probably about uh, nine, eight or nine. Right. I did play with those toys till a lot later than most children, though. Yeah. I was still playing with them when I was 13. Did you used to make sort of dioramas 14? out of your sheets, like mountains 15. and stuff? 16. What? What were you doing with them? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the Empire Strikes Back snow caves. Yes, exactly. From duvets. Yeah, and, oh, you don't want me to get into that. Oh. But yeah, what an exciting time. Yeah. For everybody. With the Christmas fire engine. Is. Yeah, oh, Christmas, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, listen, let's have another record before we do another present. It's very exciting. You know, um, looking at these presents, obviously one, uh, over the years becomes able to discern what a present is. Adam, can you tell what my hmm. uh, presents are for Am I allowed you? to do some handling? Yeah, absolutely. You can handle this one. Oh my gosh. What do you think that one is? Describe it to the listeners. Uh, it's wrapped in newspaper. Don't stop saying that. Sorry, what? This is radio. You paint okay. pictures in people's minds. That could be any kind of paper. Uh, it feels like, feels like a double CD Mm. Uh, with a little book on top of it. <laughs> Would that be right? I'm not going to tell you whether it's right or wrong. It's right. Uh, what about this one? And What's this that one? one, this feels, it's got the same dimensions as a headphone, uh, a, a pair of headphones in a ah. plastic case. Now, do you have to, uh, are your Christmas presents under your tree for your kids already? Uh, yes, they are, yeah. And do you have to control their squeezing and fondling? Yes, we do. And what about yes. Christmas presents? <laughs> <laughs> That's totally inappropriate. It's not necessarily <laughs> sexual. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, but uh, it's because otherwise it gets way out of control. But um, they're both old enough not to rip all the paper off and stuff. Are they? So, yeah, it's okay. That's now. good. They're very well behaved. They're pretty well behaved. Looking you, at your presents that you've given me, I'd say that's a DVD. Yeah, I'd <laughs> say that's a book. Yeah, and that's probably a Panini sticker album. Yes. <laughs> Is it a Golden one? Compass? No, it's not Golden oh, Compass. Oh, what did the Golden Compass Panini sticker album? Have another guess. Go on. I bet you'll never guess which which one it is. It's so funny. Is it, a panini? <laughs> is it a panini? Is it a panini sticker album? It's not panini, but it is. Go it does it's a sticker stickers. album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't. I, I know too much already. Oh, I'm not going to say anymore. All right, listen. Here, here's some more music, and this is another Christmas classic. I mean, this is probably played on heavy rotation every Christmas now, and quite right too, because it's one of the loveliest songs ever written whether it's christmas or not it's the pogues and kirsty mccall there we go that was the pogues and kirsty mccall uh coming up after the news all sorts of fantastic music and more present opening but first joy division with love will tear us apart i preferred paul young's version of that from the <laughs> album no parlay i forgot he did one of that one of that <laughs> one of them this is adam and joe on bbc speak. six music uh very happy christmas saturday morning uh we hope everyone's feeling all christmassy and, and warm and loving if you're angry about anything mm. about politics uh about maybe the way one of your friends has behaved recently or or, or relatives or what about um, the way that al gore's poisoned the planet the way that al gore has brought up this whole depressing global warming thing thanks a lot al gore. shoved it down our throats thanks. with his silly dvd in its cardboard recycled sleeve thanks for that thanks al gore thanks a lot thanks a lot the point i was making is just you know take a christmassy chill cake a chill cake. A chill cake. Do I they couldn't bring myself to say pill. Have <laughs> and Christmas is the season of cakes. Yeah. So a Christmas chill cake. Which well, it you would make more likely be a little way. Uh, chill pie, wouldn't it? A little Christmas chill pie. A chill pie. Yeah. A mincing pie. Chill pie chetty. 
<laughs> Jill by Chetty and and Jade Goody Goody Yum Yum. <laughs> it's just. Do you think just saying Chill by Chetty is racist? No. Could this be a race row? It could be if you're lucky. Then you'll get famous. If I concentrate hard enough, it could turn into a race row. So oh. maybe I won't. Okay. Uh, now listen. It's got to be present time. Sure. It's got to be present time. And, and I think it's time your... for for me to give you a present. Yeah. No. It's what? time for you to receive oh, a it? present from me. Because oh, look, you I got... see, that's because I like giving more than receiving. Oh. You see. So I've heard. Now. <laughs> 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 wow. Which shall I give you? I'm going to give you this one because mm. uh, you might be able to use this throughout the rest mm. of the show and mm. indeed your life. Now this is a book, mm. listeners. Uh, it's rather beautifully wrapped, using, uh, the classic, uh, church fold. Is that what it's called? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> church fold on the top end and the li linear flat fold <laughs> on the bottom. The church fold. That is a good name for it because you make, you know, you kind of fold the triangular kind of like ends leaves. down there. Leaves. <laughs> uh, you've got all the words. I've got all the words. I'm, I'm unwrapping it. Now speak. listen to that sound, listeners, because that's the sound that you're going to be hearing in a couple of days time when you open your mm. prezzies. I bet you're jealous of us opening our prezzies early. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this is a book. It's uh, it's a purple book. It's called The Friendship Book. Yeah. And it's not by someone. It's of someone. It says The Friendship Book of Francis Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. little things. I'm not us. laughing at the, the word gay name. because I'm... No. And there's a picture <laughs> of a woodpecker, uh, on a, uh, sort of a, a, a branch of a tree, yeah. and it says it's got a thought for each day of 2008. That's right. fantastic on the back cover. That's pretty good. I always turn to the back cover. Right. Uh, it says in large quotation marks, the friendship book is a glimpse beyond this world and a little bit of heaven on earth. Are you going to kill me this year? Well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, that's very exciting. I'm going to open it up. For Joe, love your friend Adam. Uh, one kiss, Christmas 2007. That's the inscription. That's very sweet. It's been inscribed and everything. He's left the prize on six pounds fifty. Oh that's no, did that's I? How much his friendship costs? It's quite good though. Uh, six pounds fifty. That's quite right? good, yeah, man. Uh, the inner sleeve says that day after day, the friendship book has a welcoming thought for every reader, heartwarming tales and uplifting quotes to inspire for twelve months and to be treasured for much longer. Sprinkled throughout are striking images of naked ladies <laughs> involved in sexual exploits <laughs> that will boggle the mind. I made that up. Sprinkled throughout are striking images <laughs> from... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's the sparkling wine. From talented photographers who capture all the... <laughs> best... <laughs> oh, my sight is splitting <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> about the world in which we live. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's a wheezy laugh. From that a is a wheezy laugh. <laughs> okay, let's uh, try and control ourselves and go for a thought. Pick a day. Ben, our producer, because you seem to be uh, in control. Pick a day of 2008. He hasn't even March had his... Third. Man, looking at Ben really sobers me up. Yeah. March the 3rd. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's gonna take me a little while to find that. March the 3rd. So just, uh, so each, I'm as far as I can tell, each <laughs> Are you day. mocking his choice of date? No, no, no. <laughs> March, March the <laughs> Ludicrous day. <laughs> can you take- My birthday! Can is you it? be sarcastic just about a date? I wasn't being sarcastic <laughs> about the date. Uh, I, I was just I like giggling idea, randomly. Though. But, um, <clears throat> having flicked through the book myself when I bought it, um, <laughs> I can tell you, listeners, that every single day has a little sort of inspiring mm. anecdote or sort of poetic thought for it and so so let's see what it says for okay march the monday 3rd. march the third here is a native american tale a cherokee was teaching his grandson about life a struggle is going on inside me he said to the youngster it is a tough one it is a tough one <laughs> and it is between two wolves one is evil he is envy greed guilt resentment self-pity lies and false pride the other is goodness he is joy serenity humility benevolence truth and compassion the same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. Uh, but tell me, which wolf will win? The grandson asked. The one you feed, came the reply. <sighs> Shh. Uh. Oh. Wow. Let's just have some music. Nobody say anything. No one say anything. Shh. Think about it. Have some music. Think about oh, it. This is uh, the oh, no, British Sea Power oh. with, with waving flags. Yeah, just think Shh. about that. Think about it. That was British Sea Power with uh, waving flags, and we left you before them with a beautiful uh, thought, a little story actually from one of the gifts that Adam gave to me, uh, the friendship book of Francis Gay, and that was a story <laughs> <laughs> about uh, a Cherokee Indian, and it was very, it was very moving actually. It was kind of making the point that everybody has, you know, tensions and and envy and greed inside them, and also joy and and humility inside them. 
uh, and they fight together, and the one that wins is the one you feed. Yeah. It's saying, my problem is I can't control my feeding times. Right. My brain tends to just scatter a handful of food, uh, broadly and equally over all areas. Yeah. Uh, I find it very hard to get the dispensing of the food in the brain right. I wonder what Francis Gay would have to say of that um well have you have you tried though are you are you really definitely trying like what's your you're most right, negative right. what's your most negative uh trait personality oh, trait oh man that's a big question that is a big uh, one isn't it my most negative do you know what mine is trait? what's yours shall i tell you what it's uh probably envy mm. and um what's what what's the feeling when you're watching the oscars and you absolutely hate everyone there and uh, uh, what, that's or, just hel healthiness or watching the comedy awards and uh, healthiness you, not that you can watch the comedy awards of course just healthiness not that's, that's just normal that's, normal, that's being it? normal that's good to hate people who are given awards is is a good thing i'm not so sure would you like that award yourself well would you wish you were being given that award i mean it's unlikely that i'm ever going to be in a position to uh, be nominated or win an oscar oh, but still on. that doesn't stop me envy all the people there in a kind of You're insane mad. that's way. just mad You're that mad. is that's mad, mad. It's it's completely it? insane well that's what i'm trying to say uh, but I'm man this is a, a, a lovely book uh, and i really really will refer to it every every day <laughs> um, <laughs> you should it's man. really nice thank you very much for every day he can uh, can i just pick another one at random now sure, pick another open one up at the friendship there. book at random and see where we're going here's a little short thing for you okay this is from august sunday august the 24th 2000 is this something you've prepared you see no i picked yeah, this at just, random okay and it came to pass That's nice sniff thank you very part of it <laughs> <laughs> That's a little extra sniff for you there. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. <laughs> that one's not so good. Goest. It's not so good, is it? This, because that's, uh, <laughs> this book's got a hidden agenda. That's from... It's trying <laughs> to get me into the clerk. That's from the, boo the booble. Um, and that's from Luke. 957 and that's basically Wicked. the lesson there is just follow people <laughs> stalking stalking yeah so follow, um, if you see a lady you're you feel is attractive just follow her um there we go it's going to be my turn for a present very shortly that's but very exciting first uh here is some more music and this is something that you chose isn't yeah it? this is a free play from me joe cornish uh, this is by a band called the White Stripes, and this is the closest thing. Have they done a lot of Christmas-related material? I feel as if they have, because their whole colour scheme is, of course, quintessentially it is. Christmas. It's very Santa-related, Santa their yeah. colour scheme. But here's the closest I could find to a Christmas song from the White Stripes. This is, I think, a B-side uh, of theirs. This is called Candy Cane Children. <laughs> Lovely stuff. You can't really argue with that, can you? I mean, you could, but you'd be such you'd a... You'd be foolish. You'd be such a fool. Salomon and Joe on uh, BBC Six Music were just coming up to 11 o'clock, and, uh... We should say who that was, and say that was Richard Hawley. Mm -hmm. That was taken from one of the, uh, hub sessions. In fact, from the best of the hub sessions this year, um, various other shows on Six Music are playing tracks from the, uh, the hub sessions, and that was our one from that, that... You know what? I figure probably nobody is listening right now. You because I think everyone's gone to do their last minute Chris Chrissy shopping. I'm glad they didn't hear that last thing I said about Richard Hawley because it was just a sort of rambly mishmash. It's of, okay. Yeah. It's all right. I think everyone's probably doing crinkle shopping. This has got to be the busiest Saturday of the year. It's a very important Saturday for the high street and their, um, uh, their, you know, money takings. Mm, uh, of gotcha. course. You're brilliant. Thanks. It's <laughs> been a tough year for the high street, yeah. uh, due to Al Gore and global warming. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot, Al. Uh, <laughs> profits have gone down. There's looking to be a recession in zero eight. Mm. Uh, the World Banks have had to club together to try and uh, stave off the recession. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> <laughs> the results. <laughs> I don't know why this is funny. It's actually very serious. We're laughing because it's so serious. We can't deal with it. But it's funny because uh, you're making it up. <laughs> I'm not it. making it up. I this know, is all yeah. stuff I read it's in the all, papers. This is all true. Uh, and the high streets uh, had a very tricky year. Um, so get out there and spend for Britain's sake. It is comforting buy anything, though. Buy anything. Just go and buy. It's comforting to, uh, give bad news in that voice. Uh, bad news like that? Yeah. Yeah, because it if, makes it sound if idiotic. You, if you talk about anything bad or give bad news in a funny voice, it does, it does make it a little Do you know what that funny take. voice is saying? What? Uh, it's saying that that's the sort of collective opinion of, of newspapers and stuff, and, uh, it's saying that, you know, it's probably not true. Isn't it my turn for a present now? It's your turn for a present, Adam, my and I'd like to goodness. give you, uh, I'd like to give you your... M 
Mm. It's tricky. I don't I'm know whether to... I'm going to give you your... Uh, yeah, this present. Here we go. Ooh. Now, this, this is a double header. There's two presents in here. Yeah, man. This is the one that I felt this one earlier. I felt it up and I uh, surmised that it was a double CD and a book of some kind. Yeah. So here we go. I'm unwrapping. I was correct about the book. Oh, and the price is on this one. One pound and fifty from bookends. And it is... Oh, I was right about the double CD as well. The book is Billy Piper, The Roller Coaster Life of Britain's Hottest Star. Mm. I know you're a big fan. Written by Chris Stevens. Have you got that already? No, I don't have this one already. Have I bought it for you before? You left the price on Eamon Holmes as well. The, the, both those price tags are part of the design. Are they? Yeah. Uh, the double CD is the autobiography of Eamon Holmes, uh, subtitled This Is My Life. Read it's, by... It's read by Eamon Holmes. <laughs> now, I'm interested to know whether it's divided into chapters, and if it is, what the chapters are titled. Uh, because Eamon Holmes, has he had quite a dramatic and stormy life? He must have had to deserve an autobiography. Or has he had a sort of warm... I'm looking at Ben, our producer. He must have had a crazy life. He must have had a crazy life. To, a double CD. Where did Eamon Holmes... He Was, was he a newsreader to begin with? Or uh, a gardener? What's the genesis of Holmes? I really don't know. I would say on the back to find out here we go it? It i see you've kind of look you've you've really um pinned your colors to the mast nailed them to the mast but attached them to the mast in some way because you've gone for Holmes. i'm starting much with speedier Holmes. than billy uh i'm starting with i've always been slightly fascinated by Eamon Holmes. i have to admit can we hear some of this ben can we stick some of that in uh, have a look in the pamphlet adam and, and bear with us here listeners here uh, there is an, an atmosphere of excitement here in the studio because no, we do have Lord. the Eamon Holmes Some triple disc edition. triple disc how much was it again it was uh four pounds four pounds where'd you get this one from i here. got that in a second hand bookshop you look through so there. let's have a look at Eamon Holmes Jones sleep. But yes it book is book. like track one is called it was my mum's idea to call me Eamon dot 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 track two is called <laughs> people have got used to seeing me early dot 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 uh is there Chapter one with 13 is called My Partner Ruth Always Tells Me That She Knows, dot, dot, dot. That's, uh, 57 seconds. Is there a chapter called My Drugs Hell? Uh, <laughs> let's, let's have a look. There's a chapter called We Arranged It Very Quickly. It's 19.58 seconds. Uh, there's a chapter called It's Strange How People Use Words. That's 37 <laughs> seconds long. This is the best <laughs> gift ever. Why am I giving this away? Uh, listen, wow. Ben's loaded up CD1. What, what, what track on CD1 should he play? Uh, CD1. I would go for... The, well, the track 9 is called One of the Great Secrets of Life. Mm, dot, dot, dot. Let's hear that. It's 37 seconds. One of the seconds. Great Secrets of Life is to be happy in what you do. I often preach to my youngsters, if you don't like animals, <laughs> don't be a vet. If you have a bad back, don't stack shelves. In short, find out what comes easy to you, what your passions are. I'm in a position where I can preach from experience. I work long hours, but most of the time, it's not like work at all. Well, I left grammar school in 1978. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. My God. So the gist of that is, what? How is that? How can he call that part of his autobiography? Because it's wisdom that he's picked up, but it's not ex yeah. wisdom that's yeah. exclusive to Holmes, though. Well, yeah, but it's good. You know, for people who like Holmes, they might listen to Holmes uh, more readily than they would listen to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's important that he delivers the nuggets of, of wisdom. Right. And what, was the, what was the thrust of it? Uh, if you don't like animals... Don't become a vet. Don't become a vet. That's fairly uh, basic stuff, isn't it, Amy? No. Have you done it? Yeah, I've become a vet. <laughs> and you I hate animals. hate animals. You've been very, very stupid. I'm such a jerk. No, Eamon Holmes is obviously uh, a lovely chap, and we wouldn't mean to mock him. I like him. Hey, man, did you ever see him on, Sorry, uh, what's uh, that Rob Brydon show called? Uh, Annually Retentive. Sure. He appeared on that. He was very good at doing a little Eamon Holmes cameo right. as, as quite a scary, yeah. threatening man. He was brilliant. Yeah, he's funny. He's got a cheeky sense of humour, but, um, wow, imagine actually buying that. <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, but I gave it to you. Do you think I'm going to listen to it? <laughs> I think you probably are. I hope you are. I am. You know what I secretly hope? What? That we might do a Song Wars that might involve samples. Oh, samples. You know? Good idea. Uh, yeah. No, stuff like that is great for long uh, long drives, you know. For longers. Longers. <laughs> now, I, I, I haven't even tackled Billy Piper's autobiography yet. Well, why, don't, why don't you have a look through yeah. it during the next record and Good we'll idea. read Alexa from that after that. That's The Smiths with a song by The Smiths. What was it called? 
It was called What Difference Does It Make? What Difference Does It Make? Sorry. I was, uh, I had my head in the Billy book that yeah. Joe just gave me. This is Adam and Joe on uh, BBC Six Music, by the way, and, uh, it's our Christmas special program. Uh, we haven't called it special before, but I'm now calling it special. Ooh. That could mean anything. It could mean it's, like, awful. Uh, but it also could mean it's great. And part <laughs> of the idea uh, of this show is that we give each other presents. Uh, we've been giving each other presents through the whole show, and recently I gave Adam an amazing double whammy yeah. of Eamon Holmes's three CD, uh, autobiography set, uh, reading, uh, stuff about his own life, which was brilliant. We had an extract from it earlier. And I also gave Adam, um, what did, what did I give you? The Billy Piper, um, biography. It's yeah. not her autobiography. It was written by Chris Stevens and it's someone else. Well, that's always the best, isn't it? Because yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of muckraking. It's about the roller coaster life of Britain's hottest star. Mm. Now, already mm. there, she, uh, it's been a... a big year for Piper. She's been in f the French letters of a naughty lady or yeah. whatever it was. Have called. you watched any of that show? Uh, no. It is surprisingly filthy. Is it filthy? Uh, yeah. it's scandalised the world of genuine prostitutes who say it glamorises the profession. It certainly does that. Does it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite well. <laughs> no, I haven't, uh, I haven't watched it at all. But, uh, uh, exciting to, uh, to be holding that book, eh, Adam? And you've been flicking through it during the Smiths there. Page 142, Clouds on the Horizon. After a week of convivial living at the Sandy Lane Hotel, Chris got into a steaming row with the barman. The dispute was petty over charges for a round of drinks that Chris couldn't remember ordering. This is Evans we're talking about, right? This is Evans. As Chris's voice rose and guests started to stare, Billy suggested they should just pay the bill and forget it. With rooms at £2,100 a night, was the £50 bar tab worth the hassle? Chris refused. With the dispute suddenly threatening to wreck the day, Billy asserted herself. Let's not do this anymore, <laughs> she said, and paid the whole bill. According <laughs> Is that the end of the story? Yes. Wow. According to guests who watched open-mouthed in embarrassment, Chris went ballistic. He accused her of undermining him and shouted at Billy until she burst into tears and walked out. Oh. A barman asked Chris to leave a few moments later. The following day, they spent a part with Billy joining friends on a yacht. That may have been the beginning of the end for Probably. the for the Piper Evans relationship. Wow, what a book. Does it have pictures? Oh, yes. Has it, I think it's got two sets, two sets of pictures. Two sets of pictures. It's got the young Billy, because who can forget she was a little pop stroll. Mm -hmm. You know, what was she, 14 when she burst on the pop scene? Very, very young. Very, very young. young. Very talented. Very precocious. She always wanted to be famous, I remember reading. Really? Well, yeah. she's done it. She was one of those girls, you know, people pour scorn on a, a new generation of youngsters whose dream it is simply to be famous. They don't care about what they actually do to be mm. famous. Mm. They mm. just want mm. the fame. And Billy was one of those people, but she made but it she's happen. She's got the talent. She does have a little, a she's little got face. slice of talent there. The talent. Uh, and she's made very good choices, and that's it. I, I hope you enjoy that book, Adam. Thanks, man. It's, uh, it, it looks as if it's gonna be really valuable <laughs> in my life. <laughs> uh, here's a little more music for you, listeners. After this, uh, maybe we'll be doing another present. Yeah, you need a present, man. I've I got two more for you. I'm feeling bereft. Yeah. Uh, here's a little bit of Winehouse with Love is a Losing Game. That's lovely, isn't it? She's yeah. She's a very talented Winehouse. She's, she's got a beautiful, beautiful voice, and, and she produces records that sound like classic, instant classics, like yeah. they've been around for, for centuries, like the sort of thing your parents or your parents parents might play you and you know they've got a timeless uh, quality a timeless quality that's great isn't it stop stop it amy stop take it. care of yourself pull back whoa pull back yeah. there pull back there from the brink yeah uh maybe 2008 is the year that she's going to sort herself straightens right. herself out straightens she's sorts still, herself up. she's so young she's still so young so much life ahead of her so much ahead. don't waste it don't amy waste it for God come on sake. wipe that jam off your chin wipe it put off. on a fresh pair of nick knocks <laughs> <laughs> and that'll do the trick that will do the job would you like a present i'd love a present this is adam and joe on bbc six music uh, of course and where it's our special christmas special here on a christmas saturday and i know it's naughty to be opening presents before the big day don't children follow our for example for god's it's sake. very bad we're only doing this because we're trained and we're working for the big british castle and we're not going to see each other again you know we, we exactly. spend uh christmas apart, apart. you may be disappointed yeah, to hear for medical reasons um but, you know, we're doing this to get you guys excited about the, the, the very act of opening presents mm. and to inspire you to have, you know, a good day shopping for those final, final purchases or giving money to charity. That's true. Uh, or knitting and making things if you don't <laughs> want to become part of the awful, awful, valueless, shallow charade <laughs> that is contemporary Christmas. That was a little bit strong. That was a combination of <laughs> filling and very strong opinion. Right, so I'm opening this, uh, what I thought, what I hoped was going to be the Panini Golden Compass, 
sticker, sticker album. But no, it's not. Uh, but did I correctly guess that it's it a sticker ain't. album? It's certainly very heavily sticker based. Really, this is exciting. I haven't had a sticker album for years. I was pretty sure that you would enjoy this one. You know what? I bought myself a copy of this too. <laughs> oh no! What do you mean? It's the Lazy Town sticker album. And you know, the good thing about it is it comes with stickers. It's got 80 stickers included, so it's not a kind of invitation to spend money at the newsagent. Mm. It's complete. And Lazy Town listeners, everyone knows what Lazy Town is. It's the, it's the crazy kind of global franchise that encourages kids to keep fit. Uh, and it's, you can't really tell whether it's a cartoon or live action, and it's got the guy Sport, Sporticus in it. It's a queasy mix of so many styles and influences. That wow, that's right. It, 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 there's, there's people in suits, there's people in lycra, it's really odd. And It's uh, Australian, isn't it? Is it Australian? I, I think, think he's European, actually. I think he's German, the guy. Is he? I think Sporticus is some kind of German guy, yeah. I would have smelled it was lovely. Australia. You know, it's usually the Australians that come up with that hey, kind of hybrid. Hey, don't, don't, don't bes not, besmirch I'm the not Australians. I'm not besmirching. I'm not besmirch the Europeans. Uh, bes besmirch the Danes or possibly the Germans. It smells like Christmas. Mm, I don't want to besmirch lovely. anyone. I'm don't saying it out of respect. Anyone. You know, I respect Lazy Town. It's done very wow. well. And it sort of took off this year, didn't it? I mean, we oh, were, yeah. It's you been were, taking off for some time, but it reached new altitudes. Yeah. You were aware of it, I remember, a few years ago you were talking about Lazy Town. Well, I was ill one week and I turned on the telly in the morning and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was in incredible. It was like, you know, eating every E number at once. Uh -huh. Uh, watching it. Look at this, it's fantastic, and this, uh, I wouldn't want to advertise, and I'd like to stress that there are many other, uh, sticker <laughs> scene books available, um, here at the Big British Castle. We, we, we don't recommend any individual, uh, sticker book album, but this particular one, uh, really does hit the sticky, sticky spot. Uh, it's got the scenes, and they're empty, and then it's got this amazing fold-out. Look at that! Are you jealous, Ben, the producer? Are you thinking... Oh. You are slightly jealous, aren't you? I'm going to stick these all over your... Are you going to uh, stick them face? everywhere? You know what I would do is frame that. Would you frame that? I would frame it. Well, you'd have an awful house. No, no, no. <laughs> because I have done that before. It's true. And, and then you let it date and it sort of becomes I uh, framed, a piece of art. I framed a sheet of stickers from a Smash Hits, a uh, copy of Smash Hits once. Mm. It mm. was from 20 years ago. And it seemed a sort of ludicrous, poncy, Shoreditch type Pepper of thing to do yeah. to uh, frame some stickers. But I'm glad I did because it looks wicked now. Because yeah. it's every year, you, 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 you know, it's really hard to remember who the people are. And every year it becomes harder and harder. But it's, uh, it's sort of wow, a Do you know what I'm going to do with these? What? I'm going to go on the underground and I'm going to stick them on the handrail of the escalator. And you should stick them on some adverts as well. I'm not going to do that. That, that would be a dreadful thing to do. And I was being uh, sarcastic because oh, that's a stupid thing to do. Stupid thing to do. Uh, what do you think I should do? Stick them on the adverts when you're going down the underground. <laughs> on the adverts? Yeah. That's just, I usually just do that with a bit of chewing gum. Did you I see... Pop them on the nose the of whoever's in the, in the pictures. Speaking of the handrail on the underground, did you see the YouTube thing of the guy skiing down the... Handrail? Uh, I've seen a couple of those, yeah. Have you? Lands with a bump. Does he? Oh, yeah, I was wondering how he did it, because if you look at the end there, there's no there's no clean exit. There's really? just a big I, I might box have seen the, the same one. Them. You know, looking at these characters from Lazy Town, mm. I wouldn't let any of these people anywhere near my children. It's the creepiest show. If you haven't seen it, folks, you should try and seek it out. It's on, I can't remember what channel it's on, but it's on, you know, at Tea Time <coughs> for Children, and it's one of the creepiest shows. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's very, I've very kind, seen. Adam. Well, That's it's not lovely. that great, is it? But you've got one more present for me coming up. Uh, and which, vice versa. Yes, which uh, I will be receiving shortly. I'm excited about that. But first, here's some more music. Now, this is a choice uh, f from me, listeners. Although, you know, it's, it's not exactly obscure, but it's from a great band and it's a sweet song. It's the Beach Boys with Little Saint Nick. The simmering resentment boiled over that September day when Chris arrived from London and switched on the telly to watch golf. On another occasion, it might not have been a big deal. What made this different was the offer Billy had recently had of a second Doctor Who series. She was going to spend another twelve months in Cardiff playing Rose. And if eight weeks apart had done such damage to her marriage, what would a year do? Wasn't it kinder to put their relationship out of its misery straight away? How did he know that from watching golf? <laughs> 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 that was an extract from Billy Piper, The Roller Coaster Life of Britain's Hottest Star. By, which, uh, we should credit the author. Yeah, by Chris Stevens. Chris Stevens has spent probably a good six minutes of his life Six or seven that. minutes. And, uh, <laughs> Joe gave it me <laughs> for a Christmas present. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, it's our special Christmas special special, uh, where we're giving each other special gifts. Um, Time you for know, a gift for me, though, isn't it? A gift for you? Yeah. 
Uh, did, mm, yeah, no, that's true, because I got the Lazy Town book. Uh, let's just do a gift recap. So far, I've got Stealing Christmas, uh, by Brent Holder. It's a, uh, an album of kind of, um, what do you call those things? Steel drum music. Steel drum Christmas music. Uh, uh I, Joe, my first present from Joe was a mouth harp, also known as a jaw harp. And it's uh, beautiful, and I stabbed myself in the cheek with it, and I'm still bleeding. I got the Friendship Book of Francis Gay, a book full of uh, things about friendship uh, from Adam. Yeah, I thrills. also got uh, Eamon Holmes, This Is My Life, read by Eamon Holmes on three CDs, plus Billy Piper, The Roller Coaster Life. Present. When you were a kid, did you used to, um, once you'd uh, opened all your presents, mm. there's an inevitable air of disappointment, isn't there? Sure. I mean, there's incredible excitement before you open them, then you open them, which is an amazingly uh, exciting... Uh, 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 experience almost erotic almost the, un the undressing of the sure. presents the stripping of them naked and then the enjoying of looking up and down then just like real sex bodies. you feel slightly disappointed <laughs> afterwards and, uh, absolutely a slight feeling of disappointment and then um this is more like a serial killer than someone who's had <laughs> sex i used to uh organize the oh, presents definitely in a sort of a display definitely i, I take that. them up to my room and i kind of organize them as if it was harrod shop window sure. or something and then I take my trousers off <laughs> and do a little dance, <laughs> a dance of love in front of the presents. Did Absolutely. you used to do that kind of thing? Sure I did, yeah, definitely. Arranged them all on top of each other and stuff, so it looked just like a sort of mad explosion of... I tell uh, you what it was probably uh, pivoting on was kind of, uh, you know, the, the Generation game or a game show mm. or 3 two, one or one of those game shows where you'd won a lot of prizes sure. and at the end they'd be wheeled out on a trolley all arranged. Beautifully presented. It was that, <laughs> is that kind of effect we were going for. And As uh, if the year was a big game show, right. uh, Christmas was the moment just before the closing mm -hmm. credits and you were reaping your rewards would for you the, get for your ma to come in in a skimpy little outfit there <laughs> instead of uh, no i'd get your mum to come in in a skimpy little outfit <laughs> thank you you're asking for that oh, another well. present or some music first. could i please have a present please okay here's a present this is one that you can uh, get going during the next oh. record uh, adam has already sort of guessed that this might be a pair of headphones or something it's uh it's in quite a plastic large. case it's in a plastic what do you call it kind of fun um, there's uh. a name for those plastics <laughs> isn't there uh. Yeah, sort of molded, uh... Yeah, I can't what, what it is. These are sort of impossible to open, these things. Do you reckon I'm going to be able to open it? I can see, listeners, mm. the hairy, silly <laughs> face of Noel Edmonds peeking out at me from the top of if this... If television page. was a religion, Noel would be God. Joe has got me the deal or no deal electronic pocket game. Yeah, because we're going to play around. Priced nine ninety nine as the helpful You know price. what? It's the biggest hit of the year on telly, or maybe last year, I can't remember. And if we play it on this show, the ratings are going to rocket. Maybe. We'll, we'll become a granny magnet. We might get sued. Well, listen, let's figure out how to play this thing. And we won't get sued, will we? And while we're... No. Well, we'll but we out. won't. No, the, the big British castle might. It might be. Ma well, I tell you what we're doing. We're reviewing it in the coffin. We're reviewing. We're f commenting on it in a fair way, and we're reviewing the deal or no deal elect electronic game. Let's have some music while Adam plugs it in. Are you excited? Yeah, but has it got Barties in it? You know, your face looked like the face of a tiny excited child. I am there. excited, but have you put batteries in it? Uh, it uh, tr toys have to come with batteries these days. Not it's the law. No, they don't. That was during the Blair years. No, they haven't changed the law. I think they might have done. Oh come on! It but comes with batteries. Is it? Open it. They banned smoking and. Hey, Give it to me. Well, we can they, tell by the weight. You need a Phillips screwdriver to get the battery oh pack open. Oh, God. It's Listen. one of those ludicrous oh. things they do now. You know, the two twin nightmares of modern presents. If you're buying a present for a child, like a plastic digger or something, it takes you 20 minutes to take all the twizzle ties off. Yeah. The little metal yeah, twizzles. True. And then the other thing I is... I thought it, it was against the law to give a toy without batteries. I thought it was too, but not anymore, man. Not anymore. They kind of changed it, switched it back. Do you tell me Gordon Blair turned it back? Go, uh, it was... Uh, Blair struck a blow for batteries <laughs> brown just <laughs> threw it right out the, the battery law this is shocking because the other thing Stuff. is uh, i was going to say that the other uh, miserable thing about gifts is when they've no, got a battery got pack that's got batteries they've got a bat like the the open the door for the battery case oh, i can't speak but it's got a little screw in it you, you need you need a uh, phillips screwdriver to open the battery you're flap. kidding me there's no way we're going to get this thing up and running we're shafted we haven't has anyone got a phillips screwdriver here no, I'm not on Oh, no come means. on, someone will have one. Uh, we've no got three three minutes means. or so to, to do this. How long have we got? We've got uh, two minutes 45. Is it the Happy Mondays next? Yes. We've only got two minutes 45. Here's the Happy Mondays with Lazy Itis. Scramble! Uh, yeah. That's Lazy Itis by the Happy Mondays. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's the 22nd of December 2007, and this is our Christmas. 
party that joe and i are having yeah here. if you uh, are disturbed by the crackling sound in the background there listeners don't worry the big british castle isn't on fire uh we've just got a lovely little fire mm. going uh to complete the cozy christmas scene and we've been giving one another presents and i've just given adam one of the greatest presents ever bought for anybody ever yes yeah, the deal or no deal electronic game once again we must stress that many other electronic games are available on the market this is merely one that was chosen at random uh on the way in uh in a desperate bid to buy this, a decent present this just happens to be an electronic game that has no uh, n uh noises I it would have noises i thought it would have samples of noel saying stuff like um welcome to the dream factory <laughs> and come and sit in the crazy chair i think so and all that kind of stuff that he says They've but there is a quote from noel on the box it says what does noel think Quote, in this palm-top deal or no-deal game, each time you pick a box, you open the lid and see what's in it. With all the tension and excitement of the real game, the only thing that's missing is me. Ah. Uh, wh which is quite a big factor in the whole success of the well, deal Well, it would, be, no it would be much too expensive if he came with the game. It's true. Uh, listen, we'll be playing some of that, uh, later. But, but without, n without <laughs> Noel, you're kind of reduced to just picking 20 boxes very Come on, quickly. I'll do Noel. It's time for the news. Oh, man, I'm already hungover. I've only had two glasses of Prosecco. I well, feel like an old tramp. Uh, and that provides a very good segue into telling you that was Baby Shambles <laughs> with You Talk. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music coming into the last half hour of our special Christmas Saturday show. Very Merry Christmas to uh, all our listeners. Um, and we've been giving each other presents. I just gave Adam uh, a terrific present, even though I say it myself, but I'm a little disappointed that um, the electronic deal or no deal pocket game, which I've just given him, uh, doesn't make any noises and doesn't have any batteries we had to go and have a little hunt not only for batteries but for a phillips screwdriver to get the the battery cover and off. this is a warning from history yeah. similar to the one the bbc gave you about the nazis mm -hmm. was that the bbc uh well, it's actually dissimilar but <coughs> yeah, same kind of words used uh it contains to, a warning <laughs> it contains a warning do have spare batteries and a whole range of different screwdrivers ready for Christmas Day. Absolutely. In fact, wouldn't that be nice? Make the first gift some mm. batteries and a, a Christmas screwdriver. backup pack. Exactly. For Dad. For Dad, yeah. For sure. A mum, uh, she could have a scented candle. Because <laughs> <laughs> mums love that kind of thing. Well, and that. she could have a special bar. Exactly. Um, so here we go. We're going to play a. Uh, we're going to review the deal or no I'm deal. Electronic switching on game. the machine. We will remind you that many other electronic games are available, but this is the one that happened to be on sale. Now, first thing that I'm noticing here is that the display for the deal or no deal electronic game is not backlit. It's not illuminated, so you do have to play it with a, a, a bright light with source. With bright sunlight. Yeah. Uh, and so let's go. Let's 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 play the game. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's play it like a proper game of deal or no deal. You've been randomly selected. Uh, so come and take your seats, Adam. Thank Have you. you brought some little photos with you of members of your family? Yes, this is a, a photo of my <laughs> wife, Graham. Um, <laughs> and this is a photo here of my first dog called Barbara. And uh, how much money are you hoping to win? All of it. The full whack. The full Two million full pounds. <laughs> only a quarter of a million, I'm afraid. You Barbara. what? It's only a quarter of a million. A quarter of a million? Yes, £250,000. All right, then, I'll have that. What will you do with that money if you win Spend it? Spend it on the flying. <laughs> Spend it on flying? Yes, I want to fly around. What, in a plane yeah. flying lessons? Fly, just in a plane, I want to go back and forth. Okay, there we go. So, uh, welcome to the, um, the Dream Factory. Thank you. You've taken your seat in the crazy chair. Yeah. Stand by East Wing, stand by West Wing. What do I do first? Uh, pick a box. Okay, I'm picking box ten. It's, he's picked, picked box ten. And now let's just fast forward through the game. Presumably we don't have to deal with all of, uh, Noel's ramblings and mutterings. Mm. <laughs> I'm picking another box now, <laughs> box 18. So box 10, the first box you pick, it doesn't matter, right? That no, that's just the one you've chosen. That's the sum of money you've selected. Oh, my Lord. I just picked that at random. I didn't even That's all right. That, well, what's the difference? What logic could you possibly use? That's the thing about deal it's or no true. deal. There is no logic. Absolutely true. It's pure luck. Right, I'm picking uh, box two, number 18 I'm going for. Right, this game is going to continue uh, while we hear uh, a, a track that I've chosen. It's a free play. It's by Vince Guaraldi. This is uh, the music that was used on the Charlie Brown Christmas special. One P. It was also used on the Royal Tenenbaum soundtrack. That's good. It's a blue number. That's a good blue, one. Blue, 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 blue. We're going to pick another box do. now just for the song. Pick it number two. What have you got? Oh, what 200 got? pound. That's not bad. That's, not is bad. that blue? No. Can you tell what the a, colours are? It's a red. No. This is not a very good game, is it? <sighs> Splendid stuff. Vince Guaraldi with Christmas Time is here. 
uh, featured in Charlie Brown and also on the soundtrack of the Royal Tenenbaums. Uh, you join us uh, at the climax of our present giving fiesta we've had here on our special Saturday Christmas show. I gave uh, Adam the deal or no deal electronic game just now. Uh, which has disappointed us. It didn't come with batteries. You needed an obscure screwdriver to open it. The keyboard is not illuminated. It makes no sounds. And it says in the box it's for one or more players. But how can more than one person play that? Well, one person could deal with the banker and the other person could deal with the no, boxes. The banker's automatic, though. Yeah, but it's you... a lie. The covers, for the packaging's full of lies. Mm. Uh, that's merely my opinion. Uh, but Adam <laughs> down to his last three boxes, right? Yeah. Um, what, what sums are left on the board? I've only got, um... Fifteen grand is the last <laughs> I could win. Ten grand, five grand, and one pound. Fifteen, ten, five grand, and one pound. Yeah. That's not so good, is it? What, ten pounds? What? For ten thousand or ten pounds? Ten thousand quid. Ten thousand. So you've got, uh, you've still got two reds and five two grand, blues. Ten grand, fifteen. So go on, op open them boxes. All right, I'm opening box four, no. What's inside it? Good luck, good luck. Blue, 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 blue. Five thousand. Five thousand? I've only got three boxes left, Noel. One, one pound, ten thousand. Five thousand? And fifteen thousand. Ah. I'm going for box number one, Noel. Blue, 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 blue. Is this good radio? Oh, <laughs> ten thousand, no. It's very popular television. Surely it's good radio. I've only got one box left. Thousands of retired people are tuning in as we speak, magnetically drawn to no, the deal or no deal. I've got my own box. Have you got two boxes left? I've got, I got my own box. <laughs> and the How last can you just have one box left? No, I've got my own box and the and the last okay. box. Okay, okay. So what's the what's the the last box is number three. What are the two sums left on the board? One pound and fifteen thousand pounds. <laughs> well, that's still a life changing sum for someone like you. The bank, no, the bank is offering me seven thousand <laughs> five hundred and one pounds. Seven thousand five hundred and one pounds. What are you going to do? I'm going to play. No, you're going to you're going to not accept the offer. No, I don't. No, accept it's no, it. no. Hang on. Deal or no deal. No deal. There you go. Ooh. Go away. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please open box number three. Or my own box. Which one shall I open? Oh, uh, you've got open your... If you're not taking the deal, then you open your own box, don't you? No, I can choose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, open the one that isn't yours, actually, first. Right? Okay. No, I don't understand the game. Isn't... I've watched it so many times. I've forgotten <laughs> it. Well, I opened... I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> I opened the I opened box number three and it's the hundred and fifty thousand. Really? No, it's the fifteen thousand. It. It's the smash fifteen thousand. Please, I'm gonna smash, smash it. Smash it. <laughs> we always smash something. Listen, at listen to this. Smash it on the edge of the desk. Yeah, oh, really? This is the deal or no deal electronic game. I'm actually gonna smash it. Am I? Yeah, smash it. Of course, you're gonna smash it. It's smash it's it. It's quite sturdy. Smash it. I'm worried it's gonna break smash the desk. It. Here we go. Listen hard. Oh, flipping it. Wow. <laughs> I had to protect my eyes from that. The stamp on it. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, this I'm, is terrible. It's hurting Some the child desk. might like that. <laughs> I've smashed the display. Look at the display. That is dangerous, <laughs> it's man. Wonky. It's glass they've got on here, it's not glass. Plastic. It's full of chemicals. This game's a death trap. <laughs> uh, that's our opinion, not the opinion of the Big British Castle. <laughs> Other electronic games which are death traps are available. <laughs> We've attempted to smash it. It's leaking toxic fluids. Adam's right hand is melting. <laughs> uh, he's blind in one eye. Um, there you go. A, a ideal gift for all the family. Um, here's a bit of Prince. This is a Christmassy song if you live a dirty life. Uh, it's called Get Off. That was the purple prompt, uh, with Get Off. Get Off Me. How many 52 positions in a one night stand? Yeah. Oh my lord. That's I've, a lot I've, of positions. I've got more. Have you? Yeah. I've only got one. Really? Yeah. Standing up. Standing up by the door. By the door. Asking yeah. to be let in. <laughs> Saddam and Joe on BBC Six Music, coming up towards the close of our special Christmas show. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, it's been a present-giving fiesta here. Um, I've still got one more present. We were just imagining during the uh, filthy Prince music there that almost certainly someone out there in Big British Castle land will be disgusted at the fact that we smashed we smashed a one thing. of the presents uh, but we were angered by the deal on a deal <laughs> electronic game it violated several rules of of presents um i need not recap but it, you know the batteries and the and the screwdriver and but the, here's what we're going to do uh, even though there's no reason why we should we're going to give the money that joe paid for that game to, to HMV. To HMV. A little, <laughs> I already did. To a little thin boy with acne at HMV who works behind the counter there. That's me. And he needs that money. Okay, so that's what we're going to do to make it right. Okay. Now, here's the last present. This is uh, a uh, present from myself to Joe Cornish. He's already correctly surmised that it's a DVD. But is that rattle? Is, that's a rattle of a DVD. Will he have it already? 
almost certainly. What do you buy someone like Joe Cornish? I've got thousands of DVDs. Got thousands of DVDs. What could you I've possibly get him that he hasn't you seen? You didn't know existed. Now, I, I, I think maybe he has seen this. Is this a proper, a proper present? Yeah. Is yeah. it a joke or is it a real... A little bit of both. <laughs> bit of both. <laughs> but... You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I sometimes like to do with presents? Mm. I like to close my eyes and unwrap them and then hold it in front of my face. Oh, do you remember last year I got my you? My eyes closed. Do you remember last year what I got you? I'm so excited. I got... Uh, I can't remember. I got you a dirty DVD. Oh, did you? Yeah. Mm. But it was art dirt. The worst oh. kind of dirt there is. I don't think I was. Oh, yes, you've got me nine songs. Nine songs. I still haven't watched it. Have you? I'm not, I'm not surprised. No, I kind of want to watch it, though. So, this year Here we go. I've got you. Oh, no. You know what? Now, this is this is a Christmas quandary. This is a, a general oh, Christmas he's quandary. He's got it. He's got it. Listen, shush, don't listen to this, Adam. Listeners, I've got this one. What do I say? Do I tell him I've already got it? Listeners, if he's got it, the best thing to do is give it right back to me. Oh, really? Be because or should I lie? I'm gonna lie. Listeners, don't tell Joe. Brilliant! No, listen. Oh, Wait. Districted, the dirty compilation art film with short films by, uh, Larry Clark and, and Gaspar Noe and, and Matthew Barney. Oh, thank you, I don't have it. Oh, great. I do not have it. Oh, cool. I don't have it. Listeners, don't tell Joe. But I just picked it out of my own shelf. <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> Before I left the house, I bought it a few months ago, and it's such rubbish. <laughs> I just thought I'd give it to him, and I didn't care. Hey, did. thanks a lot, man. So I'm hoping he's going to give it back to me. That's now. terrific. <laughs> listen, 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 don't tell Adam, but I'm just going to rewrap it and give it to Ben, the producer, because he looks a bit lonely. <laughs> like he might need some company over Christmas. Hey, who's this? It's Big Audio Dynamite with Medicine Show. Enjoy. And folks, incidentally, thank you so much for sticking with us for our Christmas party here on BBC Six Music. Yeah, you know, uh, we really appreciate everyone who's listened and we'll be back with you uh, after Christmas. Have a terrific Christmas day and all that business. 